Welcome. This video will explain the role of the Cisco IOS in networking devices. Just as computers need operating systems to manage hardware and software communications, so do highly specialized computers such as routers and switches. The Cisco Internetwork Operating System, commonly referred to as the IOS, is the operating system software in Cisco devices. The Cisco IOS provide devices with the network services for basic routing and switching functions, reliable and secure access to network resources, and network scalability. The services provided by the Cisco IOS are generally accessed using the Command Line Interface, or CLI. Networkers have three ways to access the IOS. First, a console session, which uses a low-speed serial connection to directly connect a computer or terminal to the console port of the router or switch. The console port is a management port that provides out-of-band access to a networking device. The console port is accessible even if no networking services have been configured on the device. The console port is often used to access a device when networking services have not been started or have failed. The second access method is through a Telnet or SSH session. This requires active networking services on the device, so it must have at least one active interface configured with a Layer 3 address. Once a router or switch has been configured and is installed in a network, the network engineer will use this method for access. Finally, there's an auxiliary port, which allows access via dial-up telephone. Typically, the only time the auxiliary port is used instead of the console port is when there are problems with the console port. Cisco network devices contain two configuration files that network administrators use to provide network services to users. The startup configuration file, stored in NVRAM, which is used as the backup configuration and is loaded into RAM when the device is started. NVRAM is non-volatile RAM and retains its data even when the router is powered down. The running configuration file is stored in RAM and is used during the current operation of the device. It should be noted that a configuration file may also be stored remotely on a server as a backup, and a good network administrator makes sure they have a backup method to recover from a catastrophic failure. The Cisco IOS is a modal operating system. In other words, there are different modes of operation, each having its own domain of operation. The CLI uses a hierarchical structure for the modes. The user executive mode, which is at the top of the structure, is the entrance into the CLI of a router or a switch. The privilege executive mode, which is the mode as a network administrator you use to execute configuration and management commands, typically requires a higher level of access security than the user exec mode. The global configuration mode is where CLI configuration changes are made that affect the operating of the entire device. There are other specific configuration modes which may be entered from the global configuration mode. Each of these modes allows the configuration of a particular part or function of the device. Examples include accessing and configuring a specific interface, and configuring Telnet access and security. When using the CLI, the mode you're in is identified by the command line prompt, which is unique to that mode. The prompt is composed of the words and symbols on the line to the left of the entry area. The system is prompting you to make an entry. By default, every prompt begins with the device name, which you can change for ease of administration. Following the name, the remainder of the prompt indicates the mode. In this graphic, you see the user exec prompt, then the privileged exec prompt, then the global config mode, and finally an example of the interface config mode. As you practice working with the iOS, you will soon be adept at moving among the modes to accomplish configuration changes. Let's look at the basic structure of iOS commands. The command is the initial word or words entered in the command line. The commands are not case sensitive. Following the command are one or more keywords and arguments. The keywords describe specific parameters to the command interpreter. For example, the show command is used to display information about the device. In the second example, the show command is followed by the keywords IP protocols. 
Once the Enter key is pressed by the network administrator, the router will output all the information about IP protocols running on the router. Let's take a moment to look at a portion of the commands available in a Cisco 1841 router. I'm using Packet Tracer, which is a network simulation software. After entering the command EN, which is the shortcut for Enable, this puts me into Privileged Executive Mode. I then enter a question mark and press Enter. This produces a list of commands available at this level within the router. Many of these commands have essentially subcommands that are created by adding keywords or arguments. It might seem overwhelming right now, but with practice you'll be entering commands like a pro in no time. This video has just touched on the intricacies associated with the Cisco IOS. You must understand where and how configuration files are stored and the ways to access the IOS. Practice using the CLI so you can configure, update, and troubleshoot networking devices.